century's worst snowstorm so early in the season. The National Weather Service calls it a mega storm. More than 20 inches of snow have fallen in the Twin Cities so far. Schools and businesses all over the state closed today as Minnesota tries to dig out. Good afternoon and welcome to the News at Noon. I'm Cindy Hilger sitting in today for Bill Carlson, who is snowed in, as many of you are. We've managed to get some crews out today to show and tell you as much as we can about this mega storm. Trisha Ann Pilsen is out on the streets of downtown Minneapolis. And Trisha, I understand we're getting the first reports of injuries and even deaths due to this storm. Is that not true? Yeah, that's right, Cindy. In fact, the mega storm has turned deadly. The State Patrol did just tell us that there was one traffic fatality here in the metro area, a storm-related traffic accident, and we'll get you more information about that as it becomes available. In addition, United Hospital in St. Paul reports that an elderly gentleman who was snow-blowing his walk or his driveway suffered a heart attack and died, and so the storm is definitely taking its toll. As we stand here in downtown Minneapolis, we hear repeated bursts of ambulance sirens as ambulances leave the Hennepin County Medical Center. And we're told that there have been a number of reports of hand injuries related to the use of snowblowers. The snow is wet and heavy, is apparently jamming up in the snowblowers, and people are trying to clear them out. It is imperative that people not put their hands anywhere near a snowblower, even if it's not running, because you don't know when it's going to be triggered. If you're having problems with your walks or your driveways, please try to get a professional to come out and help because it's simply not worth um, the risk of injury. Earlier this morning, ambulances were having some trouble getting around, even here in Minneapolis. In fact, one ambulance from the Hennepin County Medical Center was stuck for some time in South Minneapolis. The roads, however, are a little bit clearer now this noon than they were this morning, both in the city and out on the highways, but still many entrance and exit ramps to and from the highways are impassable because of cars and trucks that are stuck in the drifted snow, and it may get worse as the wind picks up, and Paul Hutner will tell us more about that later. The State Patrol is still telling people stay off the roads if you don't have to be there. In fact, there have been some 400 accidents already just in the metropolitan area alone because of this storm. Many people are staying home, and that's for the best, but in addition, because there simply isn't any place to go. Virtually every school has closed, including the University of Minnesota. Many stores, including Dayton's, are closed for the day. And companies such as Unisys um, and the Carlson Company's major employers, thousands of employees affected, have closed for the day. So please stay home, and we be, will be here uh, keeping you posted. Cindy? Chris, you've been out all morning. When did it snap, stop snowing? You're standing there right now. It doesn't look like it's snowing at all. It's snowing um, very, very faintly. And when we were out earlier this morning, it was snowing, you know, so hard, it was hard to see, and you couldn't even see the skyline behind us. It's cleared up considerably since then, but I understand that there will continue to be spurts of snow. In addition, the wind is picking up, and so it, it picks up and blows around every once in a while, and, and that's a real dangerous situation. And it's also getting a lot colder, and, and we've been standing out for a long time, and it was real wet at first. And now it's just downright chilly for people oh. who have been outside. Well, come on in for a few minutes. Thanks very much. Good, thanks, Cindy. <laughs> Now to a man who's been following the storm all morning, meteorologist Paul Hutner, who's in our storm center. And Paul, I understand a couple hours ago we actually broke the record, did we not? That's absolutely right, Cindy. We have set a new record for 24-hour snowfall in the Twin Cities. The old one was 20 inches, set back in 1982. The new one is 20.4 and counting at this point. We were talking yesterday in the weather center that this looked like a potentially huge snowstorm and that if you needed 10 out of 10 things to go to to get a big snowstorm, we had all 10 of them this time, whereas sometimes we may only have six or seven in our little iffy. We knew it was gonna be a huge storm. We were talking about 10 inches or more yesterday. Nobody, I think, expected 20 inches of snow, though. This makes it the greatest storm in Twin Cities history. I'll take a live look at our Doppler radar right now, and you can see that the snow is beginning to taper off. And uh, south and west of this line here, south of the Twin Cities and on over towards Hastings, all of this area now is just light snow. All the heavier snow has moved up to the northeast. It is still mixed with quite a bit of sleet up in parts of northeastern Minnesota and into Wisconsin. Just handed to me now the new official snow total, not 20.4, 21 inches, that new Twin Cities record, and we're still counting. We may get a little bit of snow yet this afternoon, this evening, and myself and Bud Crailing will be here in just a few minutes to tell you about it. One quick question. Trish uh, mentioned that it's starting to blow a lot more. Are we expecting high winds to, to develop soon? Yes, we are. As the storm and low-pressure system moves by us to the east, 
The pressure gradient will squeeze together on the back side of it, and those winds will kick out of the northwest. They may pick up at 20 to 40 miles per hour uh, or higher, so that snow will be a problem, the blowing snow, through the rest of the afternoon and tonight. All right, Paul. Thank you very much. There we've got a shot of our roof right now. We're located at 11th and the Nicollet Mall in downtown Minneapolis, and you can see nobody out on the streets of downtown Minneapolis. Every major business is closed. Small businesses are closed. Looks like Nicollet has been plowed, however. You see a... Um, uh, few passers by there, but um, November 1st, the scene in downtown Minneapolis. The city is closed. This record-setting snowfall is making it especially difficult for city crews to clear the roads today. The state patrol says people shouldn't drive in the Twin Cities unless they absolutely have to, even though many roads are passable. One of the biggest problems so far is happening at freeway entrance and exit ramps. Cars are getting stuck so the plows just can't get through. Now, here's what you need to know about the snow emergencies to keep your car from being towed. In St. Paul, starting at 9 o'clock tonight, all cars must be off snow emergency routes and off the posted side of North-South Street. That's parking on only one side of North-South North Street beginning tonight in St. Paul. Starting tomorrow at 8 o'clock in the morning, plows will clean up East-West Residential Streets as well as the other side of the North-South Street. Now, here's the Minneapolis information. From 9 tonight until 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, cars must be off all snow emergency routes. Tomorrow from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., no parking on the odd side of the street. And then at 8 o'clock tomorrow night, it switches. No parking on the even side of city streets. Also, all day tomorrow in Minneapolis, there is no parking on the parkways, and we'll be repeating that information throughout the afternoon uh, so you can maybe jot some of that down. We're going to take a quick break right now. We've got crews all around the Twin Cities. We're going to regroup for a few moments. We'll be right back. Stay tuned for a new free offer from your cup. You can see behind me, but the plows have been pretty successful, at least in the downtown area. In other parts of the city, it's not the same story. We do have some tragic consequences of the storm to report. One fatality that Chris Van Pilsen already reported, a man was brought into United Hospitals in full cardiac arrest, apparently after blowing snow from his driveway. There was another report of a man being run over. He apparently was shoveling snow near poor Richard's garbage hauling facility earlier this morning. Tragic consequences of this record snowfall. As for traffic here in St. Paul, well, it's at a virtual standstill in many parts of the city. A lot of cars are not on the roads. We've been driving around St. Paul for some time this morning. Downtown St. Paul, not a lot of cars out. However, Interstate 94 is actually in pretty good shape. We found driving there pretty easy. As for the side streets, that's where you have the real problems. Tremendous accumulations there. People trying to dig out and having all kinds of problems. As we drove around, we saw a lot of snowblowers out. There are numerous reports of snowblowing accidents in addition to that cardiac arrest that we told you about. People apparently trying to reach in and unplug their snowblowers and getting their hands caught. So be careful because ambulance time here in St. Paul is two to three times longer than normal. Now, as for what people here in St. Paul think of this record snowfall, well, we just went around this morning and we asked them. Oh, this is terrible. I can't believe it. How many times have you been out shoveling so far? Three times last night and then twice already today. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get in my trying to get my shovel so I can help them off. <laughs> but it's kinda like really like iced in there. I can't feel it. I started like making angels in the snow and I like shoveling sometimes. And I like pulling my foot around and making forts. How about not having to go to school? Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> Somehow children making what seems like a nightmare to many adults in the metro area, something of a fantasy land, especially when they don't have to go to school. Now, a snow emergency is in effect for St. Paul starting at 9 o'clock. They will start plowing one side of the north-south streets. That will continue tomorrow. They'll plow the other side of the north-south streets and then the east-west streets. So the plans for the big dig-out dig are underway here in St. Paul, although, Cindy, I have to tell you, it is still snowing here. You know, as you've been on the air, it looks like there have been quite a number of cars that have gone by. And it also sounds like they've already salted the streets because you can hear the slush. Is that not true? Maybe in St. Paul, they've already gotten out with the, the salt truck? 
Absolutely. They really have. One thing I can say, though, is looking around, definitely downtown St. Paul is in much better shape than any place in the metro area that I've seen. I drove around Minneapolis this morning as well as St. Paul, and I have to say downtown St. Paul really is in the best shape of all. Yeah, you can just tell by watching you with all the traffic. It's the most traffic we've seen all morning is what's going on behind you right now. Thanks, Esme Murphy, live in downtown St. Paul. <laughs> Well, many people will say that so much snow bursts a Halloween bubble, but that was really the case this morning at the downtown Minneapolis Athletic Club. The heavy snow caused the collapse of the dome at the Greenway Athletic Club. The dome wasn't even a year old, and it covered four tennis courts. Fortunately, there aren't any big rips in the dome cover, and Greenway officials say they might have it back up already by Monday. Meanwhile, crews are working at another dome, the Big Dome, the Metro Dome, trying to keep that from collapsing. They're sweeping and shoveling snow off the dome roof in an effort to avoid another collapse. You may remember that the top drop off the dome on two previous occasions when snow proved too heavy for it. Another dome I saw when I was coming in on 394, one of the car dealerships on the, uh, the north side of 394, that dome had collapsed. Well, how do you get out from underneath 20 inches of snow? Daryl Savage is up on our roof. And Daryl, you've been among the people out in Minneapolis. How is the dig out going? Well, one of the first things you have to do to dig out is to make sure the snow stops falling. Unfortunately, Cindy, as you can see, the snow continues to fall. We're up on CCO's roof right above the Nicollet Mall, which is usually bustling with traffic, bus traffic and taxi traffic. Very little down there this morning. Of course, the first snow of the year is often exciting, exhilarating. Well, there is no fun today because it seems like everyone realizes how serious this is. We've been out and about in Minneapolis, and this has been quite a mess. Now, in Minneapolis and Hennepin County alone, more than 100 pieces of snow removal have been out throughout the city clearing snow throughout the night. But there are still very major problems. MCC reports that at least 45 of its buses have gotten stuck, leaving many passengers no recourse but to get off and walk home. Many cars that were parked in open lots will stay parked for quite a while. Apartment maintenance man Norman Varberg says this snow removal job will be the worst he has ever had. How long are you going to be out here today? Probably all day. <laughs> and half of last night. Snow has been a mixed blessing for Peggy Daniel. Her car is stuck in a parking lot. But she is an in-home nurse and is trapped with her patient who has cystic fibrosis. If she hadn't been stuck here overnight, her patient may not have gotten care. She couldn't get anybody in here. We didn't do her inhalation therapy or anything. <laughs> so it's a good thing, yeah, that I was stuck with her. But if it's true that every cloud has a silver lining, this is seventh heaven for cross-country skiers. Oftentimes we'll do stories talking about how much fun people are having, but it's a little bit different today because you get the feeling even the people who can get out don't want to risk it because they know the danger. So, Cindy, it's quite a somber feeling out here for people who have been able to get downtown. You're right, and I think those of us that got down to the station today, it's only because of the, uh, the helpfulness of the neighbors. I know that was the case for us. We had some neighbors come out and literally push us up a hill. Otherwise, nobody's getting out and about. A it's really tough. A photographer had to pick me up because my car is still stuck in the parking <laughs> yes, lot. Well, you're like most of us. Daryl Savage on the roof of our CCO building here in downtown Minneapolis where the city is closed. We're going to be right back after these messages. We gain another inch, but I don't think that's the case this time, is that? No, the good news is the snow has begun to taper off a little bit throughout most sections of the Twin Cities. It has not ended, but the intensity of the snowfall is diminishing, and I think that will continue to be the trend through much of this afternoon. We're working on the forecast for this afternoon and tonight. This is the new computer model that came in this morning, and it's grasping onto the intensity of the storm, trying to say we'll get maybe a pickup in intensity later this afternoon through this evening, maybe getting a little more accumulation. We're not sure if we trust it 100%. It may just be grasping the intensity of the storm and going a little bit overboard. So far, officially 21 inches of snow at Twin Cities Airport. And we'll take a look at the Doppler right now to show you where things stand. We still have the snow generally starting to lift off to the north now. But north and east of this area, it is still snowing. And that's right into the metro, as you can see. It looks like parts of Scott County, maybe, are the areas in the metro that are getting the lightest snowfall. Esme Murphy was standing over in St. Paul. You notice the streets were a little better there. That's because of the mixture of sleet, I think, that helped keep the snow totals down. That may have made it a little easier for them to clear the streets in St. Paul. Now, we're going to go to a guy in a moment here who has a lot more weather experience than I do, and that's Bud Grayling. And, Bud, uh, you've been in this business a long time. Can you remember any storms that even approached this storm we've had today? 
Well, obviously, for many of us of a certain age, the Armistice Day storm comes to mind when over 16 inches of snow fell, but over a longer period of time, over the 11th and the 12th of November 1940, and that Armistice Day storm developed very fast right over Minnesota and caught so many of us off guard. Now, the present storm developed, we started to see it develop on Tuesday, so we've had some time to think about it and get into the frame of mind for heavy snow in the metro area. And the storm has brought, obviously, a number of advisories. We have snow advisories, eastern South Dakota in Iowa, from the southwestern corner to the northeastern corner, northwestern Minnesota snow advisory, and the northern part of Wisconsin, with the lesser amounts of snow in the snow advisory area. Now, heavier amounts of snow, north central Iowa, southeastern Minnesota, through the central part of the state, northeastern Minnesota, and the worst conditions at the moment, the blizzard advisories and blizzard conditions in southwestern South Dakota, northwestern Iowa, and uh, we are informed that Interstate 90 is closed from just west of Albert Lee to the South Dakota border in blowing snow into that area. Now, the predicted snowfall amounts, and some of these amounts have already been determined over the five-state area, with 15 to 20 inches of snow from the southwestern part of Minnesota to just north of Duluth, but one to three in the southeastern part of the state, northeastern Iowa, tapering off six to 12 toward northeastern Minnesota. Now, we've already exceeded some of those amounts. The Young America with 16 inches of snow. We've had 21 here in the metro area. St. Cloud reported just a half hour ago they've had 11 inches of snow, and the snow becoming very light at St. Cloud, and 11 inches of snow at Duluth. It's snowing about an inch an hour at the Port City. Well, the storm developed because of the very cold air to the west of us. It was one above this morning at Great Falls, Montana, as the cold air moved toward us. The warmest spot yesterday, Fort Myers, Florida, at 77, and all kinds of moisture from two inches of rain yesterday at Alexandria, Louisiana, an inch of rain at Omaha, 12 inches of snow yesterday at Garden City, Kansas. That storm will continue to move to the northeast and will continue to bring at least light snow in the metro area for the afternoon. Here's our forecast for the Twin Cities. A winter storm warning, light snow, blowing and drifting snow, temperatures falling through the afternoon. We're at 29 now. Winds from the northwest, 20 to 40. The forecast tonight of cloudy, light snow to continue as low as 15 degrees. Northwest wind still 20 to 40 tonight. Saturday's forecast, cloudy with flurries as the storm moves away from us with a high of 20 on Saturday, and on Sunday becoming partly cloudy with a high of 20 degrees. At the moment in the Twin Cities, we do have light snow, and our temperature is at 29. Winds from the north gusting to 35 miles an hour. We have a wind chill of a minus 3, or it feels like 3 degrees below zero. Humidity at 88%, and the pressure falling from 29.55. Light snow, Cindy, and 29 degrees, and an icicle has started to develop in our weather window. Light <laughs> snow through the afternoon and tonight. All right, glad you made it in. Thank you, bud. How is this megastorm affecting people trying to fly into Minnesota or leave this winter wonderland? Alan Cox is at Twin Cities International Airport. Alan, is the airport open? Are planes flying in and out? It's, uh, it stayed open all morning, Cindy, but you might not be able to prove it by talking to some of the passengers. Delays of one hour two hours, three hours have been commonplace. At one point, the airport uh, that would normally be handling 60, 